Today on Homeworthy, we're taking you into the Atlanta home of interior designer and TV star Brian Patrick Flynn. His mid-century modern home sits atop a hill and is surrounded by lush greenery, giving it the feel of a treehouse with asymmetrical windows and balconies peeking out into the landscape. As new dads to a baby girl, he and his husband tailored each room to be kid-friendly, using performance fabrics and bright colors, while still maintaining a sophisticated and elevated approach throughout. Enjoy! You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. By clicking the join button below, you not only support the production of these videos, you also gain access to exclusive content just for members. And today's members will get to hear Brian's top tips for building out your dream home. Hey Homeworthy, my name is Brian Patrick Flynn. I'm an interior designer and a production designer for TV, film, and print. And this is my 1965 mid-century modern forever home in Buckhead, which is an area of Northern Atlanta. All right, so this is the most talked about space in my entire house. It's the entryway slash art gallery. And I say that because I have, a lot of people have like a shopping or a gambling addiction. I have an art collection addiction. Anytime I go on a trip or I happen to pass a flea market, I find some piece that really speaks to me. And when I bought the house, it was a very low ceilinged entryway with a closet here and no space to put art. The house has so many windows, there's not a lot of wall space in any room to truly put all of the art I've collected over the past 20 years on display. So I decided to let the entire foyer entryway be an actual art gallery. So what I've done in here is this is called a French hang. If you've never heard that term before, yeah, it's a gallery wall or it's a, a saloon gallery grouping if you want to call it that. But what's different about a French hang is the art goes from the ceiling all the way to the floor or to the baseboards. And the whole story behind a French hang, if, if, if you are nerdy enough to stick around and listen for this, it is something that happened in Paris when people would have these cafes and the cafe owners wouldn't necessarily have enough money to fill all the walls with art and the local artists didn't have enough money to rent space to showcase all of their art. They would lend their art to the cafe owners and they would use up every square inch of space they could to let people see all their art hoping somebody that was there having food or coffee would buy it. And that is what a French hang is. It's floor to ceiling art everywhere. I change it out all the time because I just became a father for the first time four years ago. And I know over the years I'm gonna be framing my daughter's childhood art and using it as part of my gallery and story. So if you come in this way, here are some of my favorite things about this space. First of all, I'm also a lighting designer and I'm also a production designer, which means that I don't only design homes for residential spaces, I design sets for movies, TV, catalogs, digital, print, magazines, anything, and I also design my own light fixtures. So just above you is my favorite lighting fixture for my collection, and it is a 30-inch perfectly round globe. It had mid-century lines to begin with, but as we started to manufacture it, I got a big lesson in manufacturing myself because we could not make a glass globe that was 30 inches that was not gonna for sure break during shipment. So instead we made it in two half circles in an acrylic and then we did this traditional band around the middle so you could sandwich the two halves together and hide the seam. And that ended up being what made it a bestseller. The fact that we couldn't figure out how to make a 30 inch circle ship without breaking. So I'm still learning as I go. But some of the things that I love the most about what I have in here are this is a piece of Casey Musgraves, who's actually my favorite singer and songwriter. And it's just got this really cool 1970s vibe in it. This is from an interior designer friend of mine named Leanne Ford. And it says, if you aren't making anyone nervous, you aren't doing anything special. A lot of times when I'm designing a house, I always overthink and start to think I'm doing things wrong. And it's nice to know that other designers feel like when you get to that point, you are doing your job correctly. Because we're supposed to be pushing the boundaries and thinking outside of the box. And that's what interior design is all about. There are also things in here that I just found at flea markets and estate sales like this. This is a brutalist sculpture from the 1970s. My favorite place on the entire planet is Iceland. And this is my first trip there 10 years ago when we caught sunset on a glacier. And then I also got married in Antarctica of all places. I was born and raised in Florida and I do not like humidity. I don't like bugs. I like cold. 
I like being places where the sun is out, but I'm also wearing a parka at the same time. So here's penguins that one of our scientists that took us out to explore the continent made for us. And you'll see more, more nods to Antarctica all over my house as we make the way from room to room. Oh, one other thing, this is the beginning of my house and you're just seeing it. So as I mentioned, I just became a dad four months ago. We have taken up most of our rugs because I've learned when you're carrying this precious cargo all over the house, anything can, be, can become a trip hazard. So right now, until she's old enough to walk on her own or crawl, uh, when she crawls, we'll put rugs back down. But right now, we are, we are so nervous as new dads that uh, there's not a lot of rugs. But in this space, I do have this cherished runner that I bought from my friend Jason, who is a, a, he owns a rug company here in Atlanta. And I fell in love with this because it pulls together all different blues and reds and indigos perfectly. And I have blue, red, and indigo in almost all the art in here, so it kind of works as a visual conduit for everything. Another thing you're gonna see throughout my entire house is a lot of playfulness. For example, this piece right here, this is Naomi Judd. I have a lot of art of country music and rock icons that have been done by an artist friend of mine named Sam Sidney using kindergarten or craft store felt, the basic stuff you'd get when you were like in pre-K. And she makes these beautiful pieces that she just does free-handedly and they are iconic and they look just like the singer or the actor she's trying to convey. The floors are all painted white. I did that on purpose. When I bought the house from the original owner in 1965, she made me promise that if I moved in here and started a family, I wouldn't turn it into some huge open concept thing and I would keep the formal layout. I loved the floors that she had so much, but they were that 1960s super orangey floor. I didn't want to rip them all out, so instead we sanded them all down. We patched because some of the areas were waterlogged, but by the time we patched and I wanted to do a whitewashed white oak look, uh, there, there was a mix of red and white oak and it looked really splotchy. So I decided to paint them high gloss white instead. Was it the best choice for two dads living in a house with a little baby? Possibly not. Does it look beautiful? Yes. Is it practical? Absolutely not. But I've gotten eight years of life out of it and I've loved it so much. So as our baby starts to grow up, we will slowly introduce many more rugs and then we might actually change it out. So this is the happiest room in the house that I'm going to take you into. This is our playroom parlor and it used to be a very low, dingy, uh, kind of back of the house area that didn't have much life. So we opened up the ceiling and found three more feet of space. I made these huge arched doors and we have turned it into one open space that is not just perfect for adults, but also perfect for kids to play all at the same time. This is only about three and a half years old. I never planned on really remodeling what was here before, but in 2020, when the world shut down, I was stuck at home and I was in these really dark and dingy spaces that I never used. And I kept thinking, eventually we might have a family. We have like 450 square feet of space back here. The ceilings were three or three and a half feet lower. So we opened it all up and this is brand new. Nobody has seen this yet. Uh, we remodeled this and it was white for a while, but I decided to add color. Our daughter's name is Clover. Uh, she has a very unusual name. And when it comes to interior design for my clients or my career, I am known for using unconventional color palettes. A lot of times I use all white, all black, or black, brown, and white. In my house, I tend to like to experiment with different palettes. So here in the open space, this is Clover's main playroom where her, and also my sister lives nearby and she has four little ones as well. This is just an overall flex space where she can learn and play as she gets older. And then there's also a corner over here that's great for rocking her when it's nap time or in the middle of the day, if my husband or I have stuff to do, we can simply put her in her little snoo and it rocks her to sleep. When we first brought the property, we kept referring to it as a mid-century modern tree house because we're at the top of a hill and we're nestled into so many trees that you can't really see any other neighbors. And by the time I added these big asymmetrical windows, you just truly felt like you were living among the trees. So this is the big open flex space. Nothing is on the walls yet, and that is on purpose. And let me tell you why. We are planning to be super involved. I'm in my late 40s and my husband's are in his early 50s. We are planning to be super involved hands-on dads. And we are really excited about the prospect of her learning all these different types of arts. He is from the performing arts world and I am from the interior design and architecture world. So I think what we're going to do is allow this wall, this wall <laughs> I get so excited talking about being a dad that I kind of trip over my own words. We're gonna let this wall just be completely covered with all the stuff she makes from the 
from the time she does her first finger painting until the time she actually does an actual piece of art as like a teen or a tween and just let this room grow with her. So we have things that just kind of stimulate all of her different senses and will allow her, her to interact with her cousins and be very playful. Uh, some of my favorite art is on display here. This is the felt art done by Sam Sidney. We've got Willie Nelson, we've got Elton John, and then we've got Ziggy Stardust or David Bowie, whatever you want to call him. And this is the space that is truly meant for playtime with the little ones. Let me show you the corner. One of the things that I love most in my entire house is this rocker. This is a Danish modern walnut rocker. The original upholstery on it was a leather that had the shade of brown that was almost like a boring shade of tan. And my house, while the walls, a lot of the walls and the floors and the ceilings are pure white, I tend to like remarkably bold color in small spurts. That way you have these little jolts of energy among this otherwise all white bright palette because natural light is the most important element for me in interior design. And almost anywhere you look, including here in Clover's play space, we have two sun tunnels. If you've never heard the term sun tunnel before, a sun tunnel is basically what looks like a gigantic can light, but it's actually a tube that goes all the way up to the top of your roof, captures the sunlight, brings it down through a reflective metal tube and illuminates the space. So you end up having what looks almost like a ship portal in the ceiling that's flooding the space with natural light. Before, this was dark and dingy. Even when I had it painted lilac for a while, it still kind of looked like a brownish purple rather than a true like bright lilac. So having this right here in the corner gives me this incredible vantage point to look out to my massive art collection. When the weather's beautiful, I have those 13 foot front doors open and I just look at the magnolias. So slowly over time, we've been letting this room turn into what it is now. And now that we have a four month old, we've decided the best use of this space, which we hardly ever used before, but we sure did, we sure did show it on social media a lot, but it was really only when we had friends over like once a year. And then just to the left, the space is broken up into three different delineated areas. This is the reading lounge, and I am a massive fan of custom whenever I can go custom in my own home or my clients' homes. Working as a production or a set designer, almost everything is always custom because you're making things from scratch for the sake of being able to put them up quickly, take them down quickly, and store them quickly when you're not in production or you're on a dark day, which is days when you're not actually lighting and having people inside of a space shooting. So what's really unique about this room is when I had this remodeled four years ago, it was gonna be a grown up space to have cocktails with my friends. And then we started to use it, and we used it a lot. This is all made of performance fabric. I thought about this before we became dads. This is it's pure white, but it's performance fabric, so it's easy to wash. We can also zip these off of the cushions and throw them in the washer if we need to. But I created this delineation between each space with these alder room dividers that have been stained in a walnut finish. It allows the light to flow through from one space to another. I didn't want pure walls because I wanted this to be one huge family space where we can all be doing different things at the same time. So the most personal thing about this room is our daughter was born via a surrogate. And our surrogate is, happens to now be family to us because of what she did for us now. She's basically our, our baby's aunt. She's a graphic designer. As an interior designer and a designer who designs product, I wanted a very like loungy 70s inspired, that's why the disco ball is here, place to hang out with my daughter, read books to her, but also have friends with kids come over too and have cocktails and talk and read books. Or if we're gonna have a sleepover party for our kids, parents can be ha hanging in here while they drop them off, get the kids comfortable, stuff like that. I, I don't exactly know what I'm talking about because this is so new to me. So <laughs> this might not even be a thing, but as far as design goes, I was trying to cover all bases. Now, the whole inspiration behind the wallpaper was I didn't want a very standard color palette. I, did just, I didn't just necessarily want to go pink for a softer or more feminine vibe, and I didn't want to go with a standard blue for a more, I guess, masculine vibe. In, instead, I like the combination of the two and everything in between. So I have navy, lilac, I have indigo, I have lavender, I have aqua, I have robin's egg blue, we have teal, all these different colors in this wallpaper. And what it does is it shows Clover, who's my daughter, growing up to be anything she wants to be because we want to encourage that in her as middle-aged dads who, who have a baby. So in one scenario, she grows up to be a doctor. And these are all designed to look like mid-century modern stamps because we're massive travelers. So as you look, you see these interesting stories. You see Clover growing up to be a doctor. She also can grow up to become an equestrian. She can grow up to become an artist. She can grow up to become a famous hockey player if she wants. Then we also have her as an astronaut. So my significant other, Hollis, 
is a costume designer for TV and film. So we also have one that pays homage to what he does for a living where it says, all the world's a stage. And all the numbers and letters you see happen to be the months or the years that we were born, myself, my husband, our surrogate, and then also Clover's original due date is stamped on the big C. She was originally due on April 14th, so we stamped it like that even though she was born on April 17th. And then on the other side of the playroom parlor area, it's kind of like the grown-up TV space. I don't necessarily watch a ton of TV, even though I do work in the telev television industry. I tend to only be able to relax when I'm not in production by putting on something that I can binge for an entire weekend. And the truth is I'm probably not 100% watching it. I'm probably scrolling my phone and it's working as background noise. And that's why I wanted the TV to kind of be hidden. So this is the space with the best view as far as making the house feel like a tree house. So we did gigantic 21 foot built in in here. It's a beautiful forest green boucle and it has this 1970s channel back. This is one of the hardest colors I've ever worked with in my life on the walls. This is, it's kind of a cross between lilac and lavender. And the reason I cho chose this is because I wanted a color that would, this is so weird to say, I love clashing colors. I do not like matching sets. I don't like colors that look matchy matchy together. I like things to be thrown off just a little bit. In fact, even in my house, you'll see I have little things that are, that are animals to add a different, sh a different shape in each room that's kind of supernatural and organic. So sometimes, even if colors clash inside, if they are meant to go together in nature, they will actually work for decorating. So in this case, we have the really deep forest green boucle, and then we have this really bold lilac on the walls. If you go out, like Iceland is my favorite place on the planet. If you go anywhere in spring, it's very likely you are going to see like pine needle green with a bold lilac. Because they work out in nature, they, they do actually work inside for decorating. So this has plenty of space for us to sit down and just binge watch anything we want on TV. But we also don't want Clover watching TV all the time, which is the reason I'm now gonna take you into the family room. And before you see it, I want you to know that this, that this is our problem child in the family. This is a room that was really hard to design because it's kind of a pass-through. Well, let me just show you. Let's go, let's go over this way. So the family room is just off the entryway. Actually, while we're right there, there's something else here most people don't know about. We have our powder room in our entryway as well. I also wanted it to feel like a continuation of everything here in the actual entryway, so it's completely covered floor to ceiling in art with uh, a musical theme. Uh, there's music on in this house pretty much all the time. So Clover will be growing up knowing the entire Taylor Swift catalog, probably everything Casey Musgraves and anything that has to do with Americana. By the time she's three, she'll know every single album. But just off the entryway is the family room. Now, here is why the family room as an interior designer was kind of the problem child of the house. Any of you who are interior designers, you are the only people that will get what a pain this is. It has a corner fireplace. Here's the deal. Corner fireplaces make it incredibly hard for interior designers or decorators to come up with a space plan because you have this one corner that is usually sliced in half and then it's bizarre to place furniture around it because if it's a feature like a fireplace usually is, you want to look at it. But then if you walk into the room, you might be looking at the back of a bunch of chairs or the backs of sofas, which is not very welcoming. So it gets really hard. So what we decided to do, because we both work in television and film, when I was growing up in the 90s or even the late 80s, at night when TV shows would, be, would turn off, the TV would turn black and then there would be these color bars, which would just have a bunch of different colored bars and some numbers on the bottom and like a noise that went eh, it was very annoying. But I have all these memories. That's when I started to really love interior design and set design was because I'd be watching TV and then all of a sudden after all of the night talk shows were done, the color bars would come up. And over the years as digital and streaming came about, that went away. And I found this tile and it just made me think of those color bars that come up on the TV when you're little. I'm talking 25 years ago, of course. So I decided to build out the corner fireplace, turn it into my own interpretation of that. There's no grout, there's no sealer on these at all. They're all kind of imperfect, but it's just all of these different colors that are somewhat clashing that go together to create this extravaganza of like hues just everywhere. So since it's the family room, everything is made from scratch. Sounds super snobby, but it's just kind of part of what I do. <laughs> it's mid-century, but it's actually new. I had it all made from scratch. So this is Norwalk, and it's covered in umbrella. So everything is not just performance fabric. It, it may not be the most comfortable option, but I got 
a material that is the same material that's used on awnings that go outside. The reason being is as clover grows up, we know we're going to have sippy cups that spill. We know we're going to have different types of accidents. We know that sometimes people might pee on things. <laughs> so the idea was to have two happy, happy sofas that fit the architecture of the house but would be very practical. We chose Teal because as her vision develops, we love the idea of her seeing all these different colors and a lot of contrast. And as, as we did our research to become parents, we realized for a child's visual development, high contrast is key. And of course, I love black and white. As you see throughout the entire house, all the walls are white, the floors are white, the walls uh, and the, the windows are black steel, but also knowing her kaleidoscope. So the idea of the teal allowed us to then paint the walls on opposite. So anytime I have something super cool, I want something super warm juxtaposed with it. So the walls in here are this really beautiful kind of peachy shade of blush. So we have this constant game of masculine and feminine going on just to tell both stories. And I'm in love with this piece of art. So the story behind this is my mother-in-law, who's one of my favorite people on the entire planet, comes from Tennessee to stay with us for a few months at a time when Hollis and I need help with Clover. Her favorite thing to do in the entire world, and I'm not kidding about this, is to sit and watch ducks. She is my mother-in-law, and that is the one thing that makes her happy. So one of my favorite artists, Karen Musgraves, who's also the mother of singer Casey Musgraves happens to be this incredible artist out of Texas. And I asked her if she could do her own kind of Andy Warhol take on like a Campbell soup can mixed with a rubber ducky. And I asked her to come up with whatever she could and she came up with duck soup. It is a literal interpretation of duck soup because you've got a rubber ducky inside of a soup bowl. And I love it. It is exactly what I wanted. And one of my favorite things about placing art over sofas, there was this quote, I, I don't remember who it was, I think it was one of the most famous like 1970s men's fashion designers who also got into interiors and he said, good art won't match your sofa. And I always loved that quote. I wish I could remember who it was, but I love that. I think a lot of times when you have something that doesn't necessarily have like the same vibe or the same colors as you see in your furniture, it's kind of a really cool uh, like visual tension story. So here it's a lot of yellows, mustards, and like true blues. Then we've got green and a tiny hint of what can also be teal right there. So it kind of is a little bit of a nod to the sofas, but it's by no means a matching situation. The other thing is the ottomans in here. All performance fabric. The reasons the ex these exist is we didn't want any hard 90 degree corners for Clover to bump into. We also have a senior dog. Uh, we have a blue healer and our favorite show on TV happens to be Bluey, which is one of the reasons the TV is in here so that Clover can grow up watching it. But she is also now approaching like 12 or 13, so we love the idea of her not bumping into things all the time. So these are lightweight Ottomans, and they can be moved around as necessary. And there's certain days where if just one of us is here, and we are dadding all by ourselves, and we have one arm free because we have a baby and another arm, these are easy to just move around and create a space for be to pull up whatever, whatever I'm eating for lunch, whatever Hollis is eating for lunch. If we have to do dinner or something by ourselves with our baby, or our daughter, I should say, because you know, five years from now, she won't be a baby. Uh, just, just those, this really allows a lot of flexibility. And the reason there's no rug in here right now is because of the tripping hazard. But pretty soon, once she's crawling, we need the surfaces to be soft, we will start to put more rugs down. Oh, one last thing about over here. I love, anytime I'm in a room, this is so strange to see a grown ass man sitting on what looks like a, a ride-on toy. Um, these, were, these are designed by this, I forgot the name of the brand, but it, they're out of Paris. I found these 10 years ago at America's Mart when I was here for the market, for the interior design market downtown Atlanta. I fell in love with these because this Parisian designer made these sheep with this beautiful, you know, the, the sheep, I love everything about them. But the reason I brought them in is almost every room, I want something that has some type of animal shape. Because when you have all these rigid rectilinear lines in a room, like a box or a rectangle, I love the idea of something just fluid and organic to break it up. And even though these are a little darker and more mature than anything else in the room, I just think that they make people smile. So they're right here on the fireplace wall. When we decided to add a TV into this room, I am not a TV in social rooms guy. I am I'm breaking a lot of rules here. I like TVs in bedrooms. I know that like that's against all the laws of proper sleep and stuff like that, but I tend to like watching TV completely horizontal by myself. I like to watch TV. I don't want to have this I don't want it to be a thing by jury where my significant another I decide what we're, we're going to watch. I like the idea of saying I want to watch this. I'm going to do it for 8 hours. So, we built a frame TV into the wall 
and this usually will display, it can display art when we're not here, but most of the time when it's on, we're watching, we have something on for Clover that's usually educational, like PBS or Bluey, something that teaches you about your feelings while we're making dinner. The one room in the house that still needs some work is about eight years ago, we, we remodeled what was a very low, dated kitchen that was just really dark. I just wanted, and for the time being, until we knew what we wanted to do with our dream kitchen, I wanted something super open and airy and bright and minimal. So as you see, there's no hardware on any of the cabinets. We're approaching almost a decade since I remodeled this. This was at the time when a lot of people were going on and about the all white kitchen trend. And as an interior designer, I think we all try to stay away from trends. Our job is to kind of make them and set them, but we don't want to follow them because then it puts us into a timestamp. But at the time, the old cabinets were so dark and dated that I just wanted something that would brighten up the space. So we added these gigantic steel windows to all these different spaces around the, along the front of the house just to let more light in. So the one wall over here was completely solid and it made the room super dark. So by opening it up, we could see out to our back deck, which we plan on being Clover's outdoor play space. It's a massive like a 38 foot by 23 foot deck all amongst the trees. So it's an amazing place to be outside and play. And now during the time of the year when the weather's nice, so the door can be open and we can just talk back and forth. So this is one of the rooms in the house I'm not super in love with, but it does its job for now. But over here, the breakfast nook does get its fair share of use. And the painting on the wall right there, my friend Blaine did that for us. When we got married in Antarctica in December of 2017, it was a bright, perfectly sunny day. It was about 52 degrees out, which you would not think of in Antarctica being the coldest place on the planet. But she did this beautiful interpretation for us with all these different shades of mustard and olive. And so I brought that green out with these knoll chairs. These are from the 1960s. These are, I believe they're knoll, and I think they're designed by Saarinen. And so the idea was to just kind of let green and white be the story in here. Now, that encapsulates like the main spaces. So when people hang out in our house, it's a 1965 mid-century modern in an area of Atlanta called South Buckhead. These are the spaces everybody gets to see, but now I'm gonna take you into the more private areas on the other side of the house. This is the hallway and it's just off the entryway. And what is special about it is it is 100% used again to display more art, which brings personality all the way back to our bedrooms and our bathrooms. This is another example of how a sun tunnel it's not a term a lot of people use as, the, as vernacular, but for me, I use them all the time because I cannot stand dark spaces. However, I like dark colors in moody rooms, but when it comes to natural light, I want it in almost any space in the house. So we have two sun tunnels here in the hallway, which bring natural light. They go through our attic and they bring the light from the roof all the way down in here. And if you could see the before photos, this was remarkably dark before, and now it just feels so bright. And it actually looks like we heightened the ceiling, but we didn't. It's just the sun tunnels that make it feel larger. And as you make your way down, you'll find little nods to Antarctica and also Iceland almost everywhere you look, especially this iceberg photo, which every time I look at it, it gives me the chills because I love, gives me the chills. That was kind of a dad joke, wasn't it? Right here, it's just one of my favorite things in the house. That Clover's Nursery, it's gotta be one of the hardest things I've ever, ever done as a designer because it was my own kid's nursery. And when you're an interior designer, the sky's the limit as far as all of your options for sources are concerned. So it's like, how do you limit it? So instead I was like, listen, let's do, do all custom. That way it's, it's, it's easier to make decisions. Our favorite place in the world is Scandinavia. In fact, in fact most of our, our summers, we skip the humidity and the heat, not to mention the bugs here in Georgia, and we make our way to Scandinavia. And we're hoping that she could grow up like where you've got the sun out 24 hours a day, which is what happens in that part of the planet. The sun isn't really set in the summertime. So the paper I made with one of my best friends, I knew that I wanted some type of twall or story on the walls in Clover's Nursery because we are, we're travel enthusiasts and the Nordic countries are our favorite places to be because in the summertime you get the midnight sun, which means the sun doesn't truly set. The sun kind of goes down to the horizon around 2.30 in the morning and then it's back up at like 3.10. So you, never, you really don't get darkness. And it's an incredible way to experience the summer, especially when it's never humid, you can still wear a sweater at night and then you're approaching fall after that, which is the Northern Lights season, which is beautiful. So my all-time favorite color, most used color, is pine needle green, which is forest green or dark green. And I also use a ton of pink. And this has nothing to do with architecture or it doesn't have to do with age or gender. These are just colors I, just, I tend to use a lot. So one of my best friends, Ashley, is a graphic designer. And I said, I'd love to have 
a little Nordic Explorer wallpaper for Clover's room. So what we did is we created a situation where there's this little Nordic Exploring girl out there adventuring with polar bears, which are at the top of the planet, <laughs> um, seal, which are everywhere, and then we have Arctic foxes, and we also have narwhal. So there's a little story going on, and we made them about 200% bigger than you usually would on a wallpaper because she's a little baby right now. And so we want her to see this story from her crib so she can make out what's going on because everything is so big. So this was all done very intentionally. The other thing I didn't hear is I wanted the color scheme to be bubblegum pink and then pine needle green. So you see it almost everywhere you look. The other thing that I love so much about little kids' rooms is kids' books and their covers and the artwork on the covers. So we did these shelves that I bought online remarkably affordably. It was like $38 all in. But then I had one of my contractor friends cut Luan to size, spray it, the pine needle green that you see in, that you see inside the wallpaper, so you don't see the screws that uh, take these, I don't like to use the word cheap, but bargain bookshelves and make them a little more elevated. So that's just one of the tricks I did in here. Because Clover's gonna change, you know, every few years, I didn't want to invest too much money in here right now. The ceiling I'm obsessed with, we did, we did this almost about a decade ago. I wanted mid-century modern interior architecture anywhere I could in the house. So, one of my all-time favorite people and my number one all-time contractor, Michael, who lives in LA, came and lived with me for two weeks and just knocked out all this architecture for me. But this is just two by two that has been sanded, it's been beautifully stained with walnut, and then installed. We painted the ceiling black first so that you wouldn't actually see anything except the shadows behind them. It does actually make the room feel a little bit lower, but there was nothing I could do with the, the height of this room anyway, so I decided to make it something very architectural. I love the wallpaper so much, I went over all the closet doors with it. I wanted that pattern to be consistent and I wanted Clover to have this fun stuff to look at rather than just wood. Then, as far as the crib is concerned, this is from Duck Duck. This was custom made and it was probably a, a good like 12 to 14 weeks lead time. But what I loved about it is it has this beautiful X shape on the side, this part of the architecture. And I decided to do it in again a pine needle green with the rest of the room and then I went with white. There were so many options but I wanted this to be custom. It does not convert and I have a lot of friends, especially those with multiple children that say, Make sure you get a crib that will convert because then when your baby turns into a toddler and into a kid, you don't have to keep investing. We are a one and done family. We're having one child. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it right. I'm going to get the crib I've always wanted. And ever since I saw this like six, six or seven years ago, I'm like, I want that crib. So it was an investment and I'm glad I did it because it makes me happy. And also it's one of a kind, which is kind of important when you're, I guess when you become a parent, it's nice to have things that are really sentimental and personal to your kid. Now, conversely, <laughs> the rocker or, or glider is a completely different story. I looked everywhere. I looked online, I went to all of my trade-only showrooms, and I could not find a glider, even at like high point. I couldn't find a glider that had the shape and the scale and the comfort that would fit me as a six foot five person. And then Hollis is 5'11". We both need things that are rather tall. And Clover is actually very likely going to be tall too because we both have tall people genes. So what I did was I started, I said, I don't care about the fabric that I'm seeing on all these gliders. I'm just gonna think about the silhouette of the, of the glider and if it is simplistic enough and tall enough to hold me. I went online, I found this shape on like 20 different sites and it was like $349. That's very specific. I could have just said it was like 300 and something dollars, but whatever, uh, you get the point. And I kept thinking, I, I, we're gonna use this for two or three years. So the idea was I'm gonna invest in really nice performance fabric, not worry about the fabric that's on it and elevate it. So this was a bargain buy and then I invested in a really nice upholstery. This is a boucle that is a performance fabric so it has the texture and the depth that I wanted. Then we added this bubblegum pink trim all around it too. So it brings the color scheme here over to the glider. And I also thought it was really unique to bring in a mushroom lamp, a 1960s space age type of silhouette too. And uh, that's it, that's Clover's room. I'm really proud of this because uh, it's not the easiest thing to design when you are 100% focused on making it personal, but you also want to ensure that it has to do with fitting all the developmental needs for a kid, but also comfort. I have to say my all-time favorite thing in life is when she wakes up in the morning and on our monitor, which we can see in our room, we know that she, she sleeps for 11 and a half hours at night right now, which is a miracle. But my favorite thing is the two of us to come in here at the same time and her to open her eyes, we, we draw back the drapes, which are blackout, by the way, mandatory. As a new parent, blackout drapes or blackout Roman shades are mandatory because it allows the baby to sleep with no light at all. But in the morning, when she first wakes up, we always try to make sure that we're both here side by side so she sees both of her parents like waking her up in the morning.
one of the reasons we fell in love with this house is we knew that the guest bedrooms were going to have a Jack and Jill bathroom that would connect them. And so the one of the two guest bedrooms is actually done as Clover's nursery. The other room has been a storage room for now. But we vaulted the ceilings in here. I added another skylight that has an integrated shade that is an aqua because the aqua goes well with this. This is a material that I found from Cambria that nobody really wanted at the time because it was so bold. But what I wanted was I wanted a very Palm Springs-like bathroom because I just love the vibe of like the Jonathan Adler Hotel that's there. And I also just love the vibe of like being poolside there in the desert where it's super dry. And when I found this, I thought it looked like pool water. Like when you're looking down at the pool and it has the movement of the pool water. And um, immediately I knew that it was the right fit for here and I decided to take it all the way up the wall as well. And everything else here is like super simple, modern mini shaker and it's all white. Like, this floor could have been here when the house was built. I wanted some nods to mid-century in here, so the hexagonal tile is something that absolutely would have been here when the house was built. So this is the primary bedroom. It is the very back of the house, and as you can see, it's a departure from the rest of the design of the home. Uh, I personally like to be in a very dark, cocoon-like space to fall asleep which is not the case when I stay in hotels for vacations. I usually like something soaked with light that's all white with like floor to ceiling windows. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I love being in a dark cocoon-like room. So the ceilings in here are clad in V-groove that was stained walnut. We have these beams that are painted the same color as the trim. The wallpaper is from Tebow and it's just basically what the inside of a geode would look like. And one of my interior designer friends, Josh Green designed this bed for his line with dowel furniture. And I loved every single thing about it, especially this beautiful finish with the white and the black playing together. Um, I had these custom made from a woodworker in Nashville named Adam Kiefer. And I knew I wanted something with rounded edges and I wanted something that had no hardware, but instead just inset circles as pulls that you could open the drawers with. So we designed those together. And then music is a huge part of my world. I have no musical abilities whatsoever, but we have music on 24 seven. I'm a big concert person. A lot of my friends are actually pretty successful musicians who inspire me in so many ways with album covers or the way they put words together or just being creative. And one of the most iconic albums as a child growing up was born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. And I found this incredible company that takes cassette tapes and it's called Things Unseen. And they just blow them up like 200 scale and turn them into art. And you just see, even the type font that you see just brings you back to like 1985 or whenever the album came out and gives you all that nostalgia. So that's the one personal element here that I love the most. And it's just really a play on black, white, and brown with hints of forest green. One of the things that I do a lot as an interior designer for my clients and for myself, this is kind of weird, it doesn't, doesn't work all the time, but I spent five years of my life as an interior designer working in Los Angeles. And I was there in my mid thirties and I loved every minute of it. I live in the Hollywood Hills. And one of the things that's so spectacular about having a life in Los Angeles is the fact that you always have this beautiful indoor outdoor harmony because the weather is so beautiful all the time. I remember the five years I was there, I never once shut my windows because it's so temperate. I didn't even have an air conditioner. So one of the things that I loved the most about there was that whole indoor outdoor lifestyle. It just feels so beautifully open and airy. So whenever possible, I always like to add a decent sized deck and French doors or even sliders to a primary bedroom to make the room feel much larger. During the months like the fall and the spring, I have a phantom screen here too. So the French doors open, the phantom screens can shut. I don't have to worry about any bugs. I don't have to worry about my dogs going in and inside or out. Every, actually, they can go out. It's fine because it's totally fenced in. But when the weather's nice, which it is not right now, this is the pinnacle of summer and it is kind of hellish outside. So we don't use those spaces for another month or so. But what I love about it is it makes the room feel so much bigger, even though it's not. And when the weather's nice, I love having those doors open. A lot of designers do this too. Like you, when you think of having these outdoor spaces, people will be like, oh, I imagine myself out there with a cu cup of coffee in the morning, drinking tea. Not a thing. I don't drink coffee and I'm not going to get up early in the morning and go sit outside. I'm probably going to go to the gym or I'm going to have a protein shake in the kitchen and start my day. But the whole dreamy concept of just waking up to the fresh, brisk air with the doors open and the screens shut, like it's total magic. And it's the best way like from late September to the very beginning of December to just close out the year here in Atlanta. It's beautiful. It's brisk air, everything is dry, the leaves are super kaleidoscopic. And 
This room gets a lot of use because, I mean, I watch TV mostly in here. I like to watch TV by myself when possible. I know that's very selfish, but it's just kind of how I unwind. And the one thing that's special in here to me that was made specifically, not made specifically for me, but it was something I just could not live without was a lot of designers in fall and in spring, we go to the Round Top Antiques Market, which is almost a full month, about an hour from Austin in Texas. They have the most incredible furniture that you'll ever find from all different continents or things found in the USA. They have the most beautiful mid-century you can ever see. I laid my eyes on this chair. Everything about it epitomized like what I like about design. It's got this beautiful, strong, kind of Danish, modern, masculine, worn-in, rustic vibe, but it is streamlined and from a Nordic perspective, it is just very, very simplistic. It's the same leather that was put on in the early 1960s. I loved every single thing about this chair. Was it affordable? Absolutely not. Do I use it? I absolutely do not use it. But I could not take my eyes off of it. And interior designers, we love chair design because it's all about the form following the function. Like there's something so unbelievably elementary about the design of a chair that it just makes you realize like, if, I wish life was that simple as the design of a chair. But I love everything about it. I love the worn leather. I love these straps. I love the worn look and the uneven greens in it. We've got a bold, we don't have any bold green, but we have a very worn pine green. We also have olive green. And yes, this just collects my clothes every day, but it makes me happy. And that's one of my biggest tips for people when they're, when they're decorating their house. If you go somewhere and you see something and it brings you so much joy and logistically you can get it home, you'll find a way to make it work. Conversely, if you go somewhere and you find something that's a great deal and you're like, how can I pass? That thing is 40% off. How can I not get it? It would be crazy. Well, now you're just, you're just operating on buying something because it's there and it's less money. That sounds snobby, but when I see something and I fall in love with it, which is super rare, like I would say there's been four items in my life from an interior design standpoint, I'm like, I have to have that. You'll make it work. And something like a chair like this will work in a corner of any space. It can live on its own. It can be the only thing in a big open loft that can still look really cool. So enough about that chair. Uh, I do actually have the smallest bathroom in the house attached to my primary bedroom, and it's right here. I don't mind having a small primary bath because we don't use it for that long. You take a shower, you use the bathroom, and you're gone. So I decided to work with this incredible kitchen and bath designer named Matthew Quinn, who is probably the number one kitchen and bath designer in the United States. He's, that's his thing. He is a genius. He can turn anything into something that is beautiful and totally useful. I think that my bathroom is 10 by 9, so it's 90 square feet. It might be 80 square feet. But what we wanted, Hollis and I, when we were modeling it, we knew we wanted to have a water closet, we wanted to have a decent sized shower, and then we also wanted to have a double vanity. There was really no way to make it work with the footprint. It, 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 there really wasn't. So Matthew's idea was the only way we can make this work is if we put the vanity on the outside wall and your mirror gets suspended inside of a window, which is totally not something most people would do, but it was the only way to truly make this small like 80 square foot footprint work. We've got everything we need. There's a trough sink. We've got double, we've got the double vanity with the two faucets. The mirror is perfectly sized. We have these Kelly Wurzler sconces. I brought skylight in again because this room was super dark before. And to make sense architecturally of having one space that was a water closet and another that's a stand up shower, we again brought in the custom steel doors, which in Atlanta, a lot of the beautiful houses in this area in Buckhead, especially like the mansions or the gigantic estates, they, this is a thing that the architects do here. They try to bring in this little touch of like a super timeless industrial modern element to go with this otherwise traditional home. I love the idea of bringing the industrial in to go with a mid-century modern house. I think it's just an interesting kind of combination of styles. So it allows us to have everything we need. It is the, it's not my dream bathroom by any means, but it made the most use of the square footage. It was also smart to bring the green in here again because this is my favorite color, pine needle green or forest green. So we had these cabinets custom made and I don't even mind the wear and the tear on the hardware. I know it's kind of annoying when it's your house, but I remember when I was first learning about interior design and I'd hear some of the most famous and respected decorators say, that one little stretch of the house where the floors creak when I walk through used to annoy me every single day, or I hate how that one door gets stuck. And then like years or decades later, you, you miss those things. You're like, wait, those are the little, little features that make a house a home. And one other secret, uh, which most designers would never ever share, but I don't care. 
I live in my house, and I am by no, I'm not a neat freak, but I, I'm a pretty neat person. My bedside tables will never be the way that they appear in magazine shoots. It's just not going to happen. There are so many things we need on a daily basis. We have so many remotes for so many different things. One of us snores, the other doesn't, so we're probably going to have to have our headphones to be able to sleep through the night. This is a big thing for me. Is If you've never seen this before, as a man of a certain age, <laughs> you start to really take advantage of any type of wellness tricks you can learn. So this is a red light machine, and I have it directly next to my bed. And once it's time to go to sleep, this might sound like a psychobabble, but I believe it mimics something that has to do similar to like sun rays. And what it does is, while it's not the prettiest thing from an interior design standpoint, this is something I use to be able to truly fall asleep. It makes it so that I get into a really relaxed state. And when I was looking at all the different options for these things, I thought this one actually looked pretty cool. It's from a company called Juve, and I just think it's nice and kind of futuristic. So it sits here next to my bed, and when I'm ready to go to sleep each night, once the light goes down, I turn this on, and that's it. I mean, there is some uh, like necessary clutter that I have in my house, and when people come over, I think a lot of times, because I guess I, I'm somebody who's been around in this industry long enough and done a lot of houses and had really good luck with publishing and TV shows and stuff, I tend to not shy away from my clutter, my clutterables. I mean, they're real. It's part of my life. So even things up here, this could be styled better, but I have really bad sinuses, so I always have tissues out and stuff like that. But over the years, now that I'm in my 40s, I've learned to just embrace little things in my house that are necessities that aren't really aesthetic, but they're just part of my daily life, and uh, it is what it is. So that's my house. I think what makes a house a home is truly filling it with things that make you very happy. It doesn't matter what it is or how low end or high end it is. If it's something that makes you happy, you just got to do it. It's your house. And that's the difference between a home and a house. Like the stuff that you add is what brings in the heart. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.